Good afternoon, Joe Victor with Allendale and Corporate, the closing commentary Thursday. And of course, what we saw today, today is really no different than we saw yesterday in spread activity. We're just seeing you're buying the protein, even though the beans did finish a penny lower, you're buying the protein, selling the starches. And where are you selling? You're selling primarily the corn and the wheat. There's just very nothing much good to say about wheat at this point in time. Looking at world end stocks and you look at domestic end stocks when it comes to wheat, look at the crop conditions. The bottom line is that we need some drier weather to get protein content up, primarily in the hard red winter wheat area. Drier conditions for spring wheat planting and of course Durham wheat with that two dollar loan rate to increase. You're going to see anybody and everybody in that North Dakota region trying to find Durham wheat, primarily because of the $2 increase. But again, drier weather is what we need. We did have wet weather for much of this week, and of course a little bit cooler, but at this point in time we did add moisture back to the Midwest. Major growing season when it comes to corn and soybeans, and of course seasonal is still very much a big part of what's going on with corn and soybeans. Again, not a whole lot of good things to say when it comes to wheat. However, yesterday, and it went back 24 hours, the USDA basically tight-lipped until about 8 o'clock this morning. Traders was anticipating 300 to 330,000. We came actually with USDA not in the weekly export sales report that came out at 7.30 this morning, but at 8 o'clock this morning, you did see USDA finally say 369,000 tons. So we missed it by 39,000. That is old crop and new crop. You're looking at a market that was a competitor to the United States back in 2006, 2007. Huge competitor when it comes to exports, when it comes to 2002, 2003 marketing year. How much are they going to import? Are they going to import more than what they've already picked up? The 369,000, uh, 369 for old crop, new crop, plus. 115,000. That was a private deal. U.S. corn to China. Don't forget the DDGs, uh, just solar dried grains. But how much more are they going to import? Continue to say that look at the planting progress. They're about 15 days behind when it comes to the major crop growing region. And of course, now they've got a week to 10 day window to make sure they can get the uh, wheat plant, or I'm sorry, get the corn planted in that northeastern region. That is what we're going to keep our eye on. If you're looking for hot spots right now, it is primarily Australia, Western Australia, wheat country. You're also looking at Argentina, primarily wheat country. And again, what we have right now is huge end stocks of wheat, 198 million projected for 2010, 2011 marketing year versus 191, 192 when it comes to 2009, 2010. Seasonals continue to motivate this market primarily for corn and soybeans. When you look at the seasonals, you look at the potential for head and shoulders both in the July and December corn. Saying it right now, you get into the four dollar to four fifteen uh, December corn futures, you have got to have a three way box option strategy put in place. And when it comes to soybeans, nine fifty, ten dollars, maybe even upwards of ten twenty five would be a seasonal index. Don't forget the increase in acres in the June report for corn, decrease in soybeans. Special report will have that posted for you um, when it comes to free articles in the special report section, and that is looking at veg oil consumption, primarily for China and India. The growth trend is phenomenal when it comes to China's intake of veg oil per capita, and we've looked at all veg oils. Along with it, cattle and hogs, basically a sideways kind of a day. Cattle were a little bit upset that we didn't see that $2 increase. For cash cattle, we saw $100, basically right where we were a week ago. And, of course, Saturday kill, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, might start to see a little bit more of a uh, supply coming into the marketplace for pork. And, of course, when it comes to uh, the softs, we're buying cocoa. We're selling lumber and sugar and, of course, bull spreading the energies, and that is crude oil. Buying the June, selling the July. Take a look at that. This is Joe Victor reporting with Allendale Incorporated. And, of course, Thursday, uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to give us a call at 802 Market. That's 1 800 262 7538. Or check out the website. Thank you and have a great day.